Hey everybody, Gary with Sitting My Backyard Chickens again. And today I'm gonna to talk about how I chicken every day. In other words, what I do to help keep my birds healthy and happy and strong and some of the things that maybe that you'd like to do too. So let's get started. Okay, and the first thing we'll talk about is the coop and the run. And the run is just another name for the area that your birds will live when they're not inside the coop itself. Uh, if you have standard size birds, you want at least two to four square feet per bird. Uh, if you have small bantams and what have you, you can get away with a little bit less. If the run itself, which is the pen that they run around in and enjoy themselves and scratch and peck and all that kind of fun stuff, you want about 10 square feet per bird. Uh, now, if you free range any amount of the day, and I free range a few hours with my chickens every day, you can get away with less because they're able to go outside and do that. But remember, overcrowding is an issue. It causes stress, and stress leads to other things, including illnesses in, in, in your birth. So you don't want to do that. Make sure that you have plenty of room. And guys, let me tell you, chicken math is a real thing. In the chicken world, one plus one equals 11 and that's kind of the way, the way it goes if you build a coop thinking you're going to have three or four birds build it for six or eight if you're building a coop thinking you're going to have six or eight birds build it for at least a dozen think about that you can't go wrong by oversizing it too too much you don't want to go huge uh, of course but you you want to think about the future and this this is this really happens next you want to think about how am i going to clean my coop uh i clean my coop probably every four days, maybe every five days. Uh, and what I do whenever it looks like I, I have good lumps of poop and what have you in there, then it's time to clean it. And I use kind of a strange type of deep litter method. I don't really do the deep litter, but I don't completely clean it out every time either. I will basically just take a scoop and I put, I put pine shavings in, in the floor of my coop. And I will go in there and I will scoop up all of the poop and what have you. I'll throw that in my compost pile. Then I will come and I will mix all the rest that I wasn't able to get and mix it, mix it all in. Plus, over time, it compacts a little bit. Make sure that it is deep enough uh, in your coop that when the birds jump down, and believe me, they will jump a lot of times, uh, and they land on that, that they're not landing on a hard surface. They want to land on something soft, and you're not going to have leg problems and, and injury problems uh, with them doing that. Then, of course, you need to think about predator proofing. Uh, what I did with my coop, uh, my coop is actually inside the run. The, the first run is uh, 8 foot by 20 foot. It's completely covered, completely wrapped around, uh, I've, and I've got uh, hardware cloth uh, doing that. Also, along the bottom of the, of, of the run, I have uh, boards going around the bottom and hardware cloth with grass over that so they can't dig under it. If a predator gets inside, uh, this pin and coop, uh, he's going to have a really tough time doing it. I also have automatic closing doors. Uh, I use the doors from Run Chicken. They're programmable. You can get them to do different things for you, operate in different ways. Uh, I really, really like these doors. They're tough. They're durable. They last a long time. I'll, I'll leave a link at the bottom of this video if, if you want to uh, look at them. And if you buy one of the, their products, go through my link. You get 10% off of any sale price that they're doing at the time uh, and so you'll really like them they're really really good super doors uh, so i always want to worry about predator proofing uh whenever you have have your birds uh, let's see uh enrichment is a big deal there's all kind of things that you can do uh for for, for that uh, you know as the saying goes idle hands are the devil's workshop uh chickens believe me need something to do to occupy their time because if they get bored uh, uh boredom leads to pecking and, and, and issues with that uh and you don't want that and there's all kind of things you, you, you can you can do to help uh, enrich in those little, little fellas lives i have what i call a jungle gym and basically in the second part of my run which is my open top run I have some large branches going different directions and the birds like to hang out in there. You can build them a swing. They, they enjoy that. Uh, I do treats, uh, hanging treats. I'll, I'll, I'll hang a, a big hunk of lettuce. Let them work on that. That's, that's good for an hour or two at a time. I'll put an apple on a stick and it just goes back and forth as they're pecking on it and having a good time. Just you use your imagination to give your birds something to do. And again, if you're able to let them go outside of the run, for a few hours every day, uh, they can go, you know, 
pick grass and bugs and things and it just it just just makes them a lot happier whenever they do that and they're they're actually healthier whenever they can do that because happiness kind of breathes into that whenever you ha have a well uh, well meaning and everything with with your birds uh, let's see some more uh, you know I, I dust baths are, are, are a huge uh, thing for a bird and it's a huge health thing and if you've ever seen your chickens you know, scratching and digging a hole and laying in there. And I've had people tell me, well, what's wrong with my chickens? They're laying flopping around uh, in, in the dirt, but they're really putting dust against their skin and creating a dust bath. And what this does is help kills uh, lice and mites and different insects that can get on them. And I create my own dust baths. And my, my girls have dust baths year round uh, and that stays dry. And it's very important. And I have a video on how I do my dust baths. So, so go check that out. I, I can't stress enough enough how important these things are another big topic is well what am i going to feed my birds uh i got a buddy of mine scott who's a really really good bass fisherman and he has spent some time trying to teach me how to catch bass and we were in the sporting goods store one day and i picked up a bait and it was just gorgeous i mean you, you could look at this bait and go oh my god i know a big huge bass is going to jump all over this so i brought and ship and went to show it to scott and he looked at it and he just very politely said you know there's a lot of baits that are designed to catch fishermen and not necessarily fish and i that kind of stuck with me through through the years that he said that and i realized that even in the chicken world there are chicken foods that are designed to catch the owners and not necessarily the chickens. That, I mean, th these things look great in the package. You can, there's pictures on there or you have a clear package that you can see and you see grains and bits of corn and just all kind of finds they, and they look wonderful. But I use these more of a treat than anything and the reason I don't use this uh, as a main diet for my flock, think of it like this. You put this out and you have all these different elements that, that are in there. And the birds get to pick and choose. And yes, they're a balanced diet, if that's what it says on the package, if your chickens eat the right proportions of each thing that's in there, the grains, the fines, the corns, uh, wheat, barley, whatever the case may be. But chickens are just like people. You know, they're going to pick and choose what they like. You know, fines have a tendency to go to the bottom of the bag or go to the bottom of the feeder. They don't get them as much. That's where a lot of the nutrition is that they put in these. So it's really kind of iffy if, if every bird is getting the same amount of nutrition and the same amount of balance in their nutrition. I like pelletized feed. I know each pellet that they eat has got the right and balanced amount of nutrition in each pellet, and I know what they're getting. And I supplement that with all kinds of goodies for them. We have healthy table scraps that we give our birds, uh, chopped up greens. Uh, in the summertime, I will, I will slice up grapes and blueberries, put them in ice trays, freeze them, feed them to the birds. They really, really like that. Uh, again, what I said earlier about apples, that, that, you know, they, they have a great time. So there's all kind of good, healthy things that you can give your birds, but don't get caught up in what looks pretty. What's more important is what is really, really healthy for your birds. About every three or four days, I'm going to ferment their food. It's really easy to do. I've got a video on fermenting and growing spouts. You need to go out and check that as, as well. It, it really grows a bacteria that's very, very good for the bird's gut health in there. And I will grow sprouts for them as well. Again, so easy to do. Go check out the video. Uh, I will give them uh, apple cider vinegar. And it must be apple cider vinegar that has on the bottle with the mother on there and this this is the stuff that has the bacteria in it you can get apple cider vinegar that is just pretty and clear and clean but the stuff with the mother is going to have a layer in the bottom of it and, and you want to know uh, what it is and this again is very good for gut health i do not give it to my birds uh constantly i will probably mix up a couple of five uh, or one five gallon uh bucket of it once a month you know and i t keep two five gallon buckets in my uh in the run one of them has always got fresh clear water and the other one every other time every three times whatever it, it may be i will put the apple cider vinegar on there the outside water that i have for the birds i have a couple of gallon and a half waters waters on the outside of the run in the yard uh, that they use in here i'll put pre and probiotics uh, in there for them uh, oregano uh, i'll put in there for them it's really really good whenever i'm add my feed itself 
my feed goes into a five gallon bucket and when I'm about halfway through there I'll stop and I'll put oregano and different herbs and what have you in that then I'll continue to fill it up and at the very top of that I spread red pepper flakes uh, I read a long time ago that red pepper flakes are good for preventing worms. They're, they, they're, not, they're not used to, to get rid of worms, but they're good for helping to prevent worms. And birds, chickens, do not taste heat. So there, there's no issue with them going, oh my goodness, this is so hot. Uh, so I, I layer my feed at different times and to put good things for your animals in there. And folks, prevention is so much easier than it is to, to then cure. Uh, if you if you get sick birds, it is such a tough ordeal because one sick bird can lead to your whole flock. Plus, it takes a lot of your time and a lot of your attention. So prevention is the is the thing and the way to go. And, and these are just some of the things that I would do on an ongoing and regular basis uh, with my chickens. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I make flock blocks. Uh, you, I've got a video on that on how you can make your own flock block and I, and I got this from Madam President over at Chicken Land Inn and mine's a little bit different version of, of hers but it's still basically the same that it keeps their keeps them come busy for quite a while and it's good for them it's got a lot of things in the flock block that is definitely very good for them so, so that's something else that you can do so there's a big variety of things that you can feed your animals uh, let's talk a minute about protecting your birds um, I use hardware cloth around uh, my chicken pen and around the run. Um, you have to think about the safety of your birds out in the open. Uh, recently, I lost a gold lace Wyandot to a hawk. Uh, it was very, very disturbing, very sad. This was a, such a beautiful young bird, very, very pretty. And she was sweet on top of that. And when I came home, I saw her out in the yard and my birds were all in one spot and they were frozen, not moving, not making a sound. And immediately when I saw them, and if you ever see your birds like that, I knew somewhere there was a predator because this is a, 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 one of the things that chickens will do when they know that there's a predator around. Whether it's a ground predator or an air, air predator, they can freeze up like that, not move, hopefully not be seen, not be heard. So I started looking around and sure enough, I saw that hawk up in the tree and I saw my bird out there laying uh, in the middle of the backyard that was dead. Uh, I tried to shoo it away, it went and it would just fly from tree to tree to tree. Uh, finally it got dark, the bird left and I didn't pick the animal up right then, I was going to wait till the next morning and the next morning I went out there uh, just a little after daybreak and before I got the bird picked up and was ready to, to uh, bury her, that hawk was back, it wanted to claim its prize. So be very very diligent about that one of the things that may have happened uh we have a big flock of crows or at least at least we have at times and crows and hawks do not get along at all and you probably have seen a crow harassing a hawk driving it out of the area they don't like each other but one of the things that crows do not like is sudden flashes of light and not long ago a few months ago i strung up some cds over the open part of my run thinking that the flashes of light would help deter hawks. Uh, well, what they did was they helped to deter the crows as well. And so I may have actually led to the demise of that sweet little bird. Uh, since then I have removed those CDs. Um, I have put dog food out where the chickens can't get to them, but hopefully that, that some crows can get to, to them. I have a crow call on my phone and I have a little amplifier speaker and I've been going out there daily and, and calling some crows and we're starting to see a few more in the area. A couple of days ago there were probably a hundred of them that passed over but kept going but it tells me they're, that they're at least haven't completely left the area. So look online and you can see some things that would help attract the crows to your area and again it's good to have them. When I was a boy uh, we never liked crows because daddy said that, that they were they were trash birds. So we would chew them away, shoot guns in the air, try to get rid of them. But, but that is not the case. If you raise chickens, crows are your friend if you let these birds uh, go to, to the outside. You can also have a dog that is raised from a young puppy with your birds. The dog uh, needs to be one that lives outside in the same area as they do. They're a great deterrent for, for predators, whether raccoons, uh, or, or predators from the air. Uh, just the sight of them will oftentimes keep a bird or, or, or another predator from coming around. Uh, so think about protecting your chickens because losing one, 
uh, it's never a fun thing at, at all to do. And, and, uh, and you know, I'm experienced. I, I've lost birds, you know, several times over the years. This is the first time, and uh, I really can't remember the last time that we lost one uh, to a hawk. Uh, a lot of times it's just, uh, we had a stray dog some few years ago show up that never showed up again and killed a couple of them, um, and then natural deaths and what have you. But uh, it was really something to see this one that got it killed, and, and this hawk just didn't want to leave. You know, that, that, was, that was crazy, the, the fact you knew it was trying to claim its prize, uh, but it didn't get, to, didn't get it, so that was great. Uh, one of the most important things that you can do is just literally get to know your birds. Spend some time out there, watch them, uh, understand the flock dynamics. Pecking order is a real thing, and you can see how that works out. Different birds have different personalities, and, and you get to know your birds, which ones are really sweet, which ones like to be held, which ones really don't want to be held. I have a couple of mine that don't like to be held, but they certainly want to come and, and get petted. They will come, and they will get right along the side of my leg, and they'll just stand there, and I'll reach down there and pet them, uh, and they'll let me do that two or three times, and then they'll walk off. But if you pick them up, they get a little squirrely. They don't really care for that. But I've got a few that would spend the whole afternoon in my arms with me walking around. So so get to know your flock and understand the dynamics of them. Enjoy them. And this will help you better recognize when you have a bird that is becoming ill or is injured as well. And it just makes a big difference. So guys, I hope some of these things have helped you. Uh, maybe a few things that you would want to incorporate whenever you start uh, thinking about how you want to protect your birds, how you want to feed your birds, what you're going to feed your birds. Remember, uh, don't buy that food that's eye candy for you. Buy that food that is best for, for those girls that are out there. Give them the treats, uh, ferment them some food sometimes, uh, sprout some beans and peas for them sometimes. All of these things can go a big, long ways. Apple cider vinegar that we talked about earlier. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten something out of it. We'll see you in the next time. In the meantime, take care. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.